Hey guys. Hello, hello. Welcome. Happy Monday. Hello guys. Welcome in. We're going to give it a minute to let everybody get a chance to hop on. Hey Lee. Hey April. Jennifer, hello. Fractured Daisy. James, hello. We'll get everybody joining tonight. Hello, hello. I've spent most of this day trying to keep warm. Still really cold. Welcome in, you guys. All right. Well, welcome, you guys. Happy Monday. Happy President's Day as well. And happy belated Valentine's Day. So welcome to Mixed Media Monday. My name is Brianna, also known as Dread Pirate Bree, and you can find me here on Instagram under this username. Welcome to Mixed Media Mondays, the live stream that we do every Monday where we tackle a mixed media project together. For the next several weeks, we are hosting a sponsored live stream here on Mixed Media Mondays featuring our friends at Marabou. I want to give a huge thank you to our sponsors at Marabou. You can follow them at Marabou Creative USA. They make all these lovely products, um, minus the brushes, but their products are amazing, you guys. And I'm not just saying that. I have yet to find a Marabou product that I don't love. Uh, be sure and give them a follow here at Marabou Creative USA. They also repost a lot of great art. It's amazing. Like If you're looking for some inspiration or just some pretty pictures to fill up your feed, they post a lot of beautiful stuff. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stick this up here in the corner, and we're going to go ahead and look at our products here. I just want to lead off by saying you can find all these products in the Art Snack Shop, and you can actually shop them in this feed. So in this live stream down here in the pin product section, uh, if you're watching it live and if you're watching the replay, you can still shop these products in the replay. We're going to be working with, we're going to technically be working with two different products, but I'm mainly going to be focusing on one. Um, the first, so the main product here is going to be the Marabou watercolor crayons. These are amazing. I love these. I've been in love with these for years. They are a wax based pastel crayon and they're water soluble. So my surface today, I'm actually using the Canson mixed media boards. Now, while these are not necessarily the greatest for a lot of heavy water, they are great for mixed media purposes, especially like acrylic paint. And it's just, it's a nice thick board and it's meant to handle a variety of mixed media. So I'm going to be showing you guys some of my favorite techniques because I love to use these so much. And when you lay them down, oh, I love it. Now there's a, there is a slight, this, this board is very smooth, but there is a slight texture to it, which is something I want because I like that the texture actually like it kind of gives the crayon something to scrape against to leave pigment on the surface. Now we're going to make a couple of swatches here just to give you a little bit of a demonstration. I know I'm doing it right in the middle of the board, but that's okay because I always save one of these sheets for test driving anyways. So grabbing a water brush here, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways you can make this work for you and in different techniques. Now you can lay them down plain like this, or you can take a wet water brush or wet brush with water and you can actually fan it out like a watercolor and it just moves. These do dry solidly after 24 hours. So they won't move after 24 hours, whether they are wet or the, you know, just laid them down. So you can, you can fan them out with water. You can also, and here's where we're actually going to use our next product here, where you can use some of the aqua ink. Now I've only got a couple of these. I'm not going to use a whole lot of these today, but I did want to have it on hand to kind of help give some, some value, some, some of the, uh, some of the parts in our illustration. And I'm not using a lot. I'm just going to use a little bit here. And honestly, pulling straight from the cap, it can even then can be a little bit intense as far as colors. You can just take a piece of wax paper and just dilute it down. And what you can do is you can actually activate your watercolor crayons with the ink. So it gives you a nice variety of just kind of blending and like a little bit of a shade to your color. Like learn to mix with your colors. Definitely mix your colors. It will make whatever palette, no matter how big or small your palette, it'll make it go a really long way. And then with that, you can work on getting some nice texture, or you can just fan it out and block it out entirely. 
And then last but not least is my personal favorite, and I love to use this. Now, for this part, you're going to either need a white paint or a, ge a gesso. And I like to use gesso mainly because it's got so much tooth to it. So this is just some gesso that I have in my studio. I'm moving some things around. And we're going to take that same wax paper here after giving it a good shake because it, it's acrylic-based. Now, again, you can do this with a white a white acrylic paint. You can even do it with a white watercolor. But my favorite to do is a gesso. And the reason why is because it is permanent when dry and it has a tooth to it and it makes your piece very matte. So by taking the paintbrush right here, we're just going to go ahead and apply it. And what you end up creating is a nice, solid, opaque, opaque color. These are basically like travel acrylic paints. I use this so much in my work. And now obviously by adding white, it's going to make it a little bit more pastel, but that's when you can layer. So once this is dry, you could actually go over with the same color and you could deepen the color out by just diluting it with water instead of gesso. So those are a couple of ways that you can use these crayons and I love it. They're so versatile. So let's go ahead and get into our project then. I'm gonna move my, my wax paper over here, my palette. We're gonna keep our crayons out kind of off to the side and always keep a, a test swatch, a test page nearby you. So I thought, you know what? I haven't drawn a red panda before. Let's change that. <laughs> so we're gonna, we have a red panda here that we're gonna be making. Let me just get my crayons situated and move my ink so I can actually see them. Oh, again, we're not, we're not going to use a whole lot of inks today, but it is nice to have them there as well as they just play nice. Marabou products just like play nice with each other. All right. So I have the idea to do this beautiful little red panda guy here and let's go ahead and jump in. So I'm going to pull, keeping in mind his coloring. Now I did kind of block out some of the areas for his coloring. We're going to go ahead and we're going to pull out some colors that kind of resemble Red Panda. Now remember, always start lighter and work darker. Now you can also, what you can do is you can actually blend these because that's another beautiful thing about these. Is these actually blend really well together. And we're going to be going over, kind of like laying down. We're just going to go right over our lines. I did sketch this in colored pencil, if you were wondering. And you don't need a whole lot. You don't need to fill it into every little like nook and cranny because once you add gesso and you start moving it around or water, you'll be able to get into those little corners. So now we've got our base coat there. And I like to work in little patches like this, kind of like a paint by numbers, not a whole lot of, not a whole lot um, of fanciness going on. I just, I like to, to work in little patches, especially because the longer you leave these out, the quicker they can dry, the less, uh, the less movable they become. They don't move around super easy. Now this is kind of a really like dark, kind of color here. It's not very vibrant, but that's okay because we're going to go ahead and fix that. And you can actually fix it, but you, you can actually fix that by layering up. You can just take some orange, kind of bring it out a little bit. We're going to wait for that section to dry right there. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to continue to kind of fill in our areas here and just drag it around. We're leaving some of the areas white because that's how we, uh, red pandas. That's how their, their coloring naturally tends to be. But see, by blending it in, we're already starting to see a little bit more color in that little section. So we're going to go ahead and do that once this area dries. Now, if you want a more matte, solid, opaque, uh, surface, you, then you add more gesso to it or more paint, whichever. And if you want it to be less opaque, then you add a little bit more water instead because the water keeps it translucent. And you can also, a really great way to use these is by, oh see, I love the, the different color blocking there that it's just kind of bringing out naturally. I have, I think I lost a little, this other little eyebrow there, but that's okay. Don't be afraid to lose your lines in your piece just go for it. Know that you are the creator of your piece and that you can always bring it back and you can always make it better. All right. Those little eyebrow patches look like they're his eyes <laughs> right now, but it's okay. We're going to fix it soon. 
we're just laying down our base colors here and we're going to be moving around the piece so just kind of keep that in mind whenever you're working on your page just we're going to be moving around so we're going to be applying that same technique and this time being prepared and actually applying the orange all the way through I think red pandas are so cute. Okay, and so that's like a really good chunk right there. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just kind of apply that in. And spread that around, make it a little bit more reddish. And again, if it doesn't look, it just, it looks a little wonky right now, but that's okay because we're not done yet. It's in that in-between stage. Now, oftentimes we feel really discouraged as artists in this in-between stage we start to feel like, oh my gosh, it's not turning out how I ever envisioned it to be. Well, no, it's still, it's still hatching. It's still coming to life. So you got to power through that awkward stage. Got to power through that and turn it into something fantastic. Right. This is a red panda, or at least attempting to be. I've never really drawn a red panda before. So this is all kind of new for me. It's probably not 100% accurate, but you know what? I almost added fairy wings to it. <laughs> and I'm just, I just have a medium brush here. And that's just because I like to have the control in these little areas, especially because I'm going in a block at a time. Now, another thing that you can do is you can actually work on lifting. So this is throwing me off just a little bit. Ooh, there was some blue ink on that side. But either way, because it's water soluble, what you can do is you can just simply add some and then blot it up, add some water, blot it up with your paper towel, and it already lifts the color. Okay. And remembering that we still have a tail to fill in. I'm gonna go ahead, just kind of overlap. I love these because they're so, they layer so well on top of each other. It is beautiful. Now, you know, if you want to add more layers going forward, like if you want to layer on top of this, you do need to make sure that the area is completely dry. Otherwise it will, it'll just kind of make a mess. So that's another reason why we have all these little areas to work on is so this way we can bounce back and forth frequently. That's just something I like to do with my regular work altogether. And I just, I love this, you guys. They are so creamy and smooth. They're also kind of like a mess-free watercolor almost when you're when traveling. Can't tell you how many times I have just grabbed a bag of water-soluble crayons and some a little bottle of gesso in like a with a little tip on the end so I can just direct, like apply it directly to my piece. And I'll just be wherever I'm at, I'll whip it out and it's like a travel-friendly acrylic paint. And I have a, like a water brush. You can do it with a water brush. And they're so nice. Okay. And you get those little corners there. See, that was more water right there instead of gesso. And that actually creates a beautiful dynamic there in the values. We're just going to get that nice reddish brown color in. We almost got it done. And then I think we'll work on some flowers waiting for the rest of this fur to dry up. All right, I might even switch. No, no, I can make this one work. I thought about switching brushes, but it's okay. I'm committed, committed. Now the awesome thing about these crayons too, guys, is that they are available in sets. They're in like sets of four or five or something like that. So if you didn't really know which colors to try, you wanted to try a few colors, but you didn't know which ones, you could buy like just a set and work with that. And they're meant to, the sets are meant to complement each other. So be sure and check that out. Or if you want to just buy certain colors, my personal favorite is this pomegranate color right here. Um, you could also do that. So we're gonna go ahead, we're actually gonna use this directly. 
and we're just going to apply it in the shadows. And that's another thing when doing this technique, you want to apply most of your application into the shadows if you want a darker area because it will get a wider range of value, especially when you add some of this gesso and you just spread it upwards. And it's, this is kind of a damp brush, so it's not super dry. And use that to your advantage. Adding a little bit more of the gesso, just kind of stroking upwards. And it doesn't have to be complete. It can be a little incomplete. Like, leave some of the white spaces there. It's totally okay. All right, so we have that one right there. I think we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and just do the same thing up in this corner. And remember, it's okay to leave some areas white. Start lighter, work darker. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and add some right in there. Kind of like the underside of the petals, just a little bit. All right, doing good. I think if we start back up on the top over here, we'll get to a point. We need to add a little bit of orange in there just because we didn't do that the first time around. We need to make the rest of his fur be matching. And don't worry, if you're just tuning in and he looks like he doesn't have eyes, it's okay, we're gonna bring him out. But we first we gotta lay down all of our, all of our texture and color first. It's kind of like working with gouache in a way, because in gouache, I see a lot of people, I haven't worked a lot with gouache and maybe Hallie is, is a better, um, a better candidate to answer that kind of question. But I feel like whenever I do watch people use gouache, there's a lot of laying down in colored blocks and then building up from there. So that's kind of what we're doing here today. All right, so I'm liking how that's going. Let's go ahead and fill in the tummy area. Now I could use black because that's typically how red pandas are, but I don't really want to use black. So we're going to go ahead. What we're going to do is we're actually going to apply a purple and we're just going to try and make it a really deep color. Now he's holding a kind of branch, but that's okay because we can go over it afterwards. And you can even, you don't have to do just one color. You could easily do like, I'm gonna do kind of this, his belly, kind of create that dark purple tone. But then I'm gonna take this kind of Genetian, Genetian, Genetian? I don't know, it's a dark blue. It's a dark blue color. And we're just gonna add it in there. We're just gonna layer that, kind of bring out some various shadows there, especially because it's going to lighten up as soon as we add a little bit of gesso there. And I like to add a gesso just for the base because I like that solid, like that solid application and build from there. That's right. Purple is the universal shadow color. Kind of just building it in there. And now it looks kind of weird right now with his orange fur. It looks like a red panda. And then you just get this purpley blueness happening, but that's okay because we're going to accent it in other areas of our little red panda guy. Because we still have like his tail and his nose that need some darker applications. Now I love to do this instead of gravitating to black, like to black ink or to black paint, I love adding a dark color of something else in place of that because it adds, it kind of keeps your illustration lighter. Okay. Still giving that same effect, but just giving it kind of a color tone, color tone adjustment. All right, so now that we've got that, Let's go ahead and take, because we have, his stomach is going to be the darkest area. So let's go ahead and take our lavender color and apply it like so. Still keeping with that purple 
still keeping with that purple. And again, like his paws over here, but it's not a terrible thing that it gets blended. And we're just gonna apply lavender like right where the highlights are at, including his little feet right here. And we're gonna go ahead and just apply some of that purple. So we're kind of keeping it a little bit consistent, but not too much because it's a lot, it's a lot lighter on this side of the panda. And then even some of that blue here. But again, not a whole lot because I want it to kind of complement. So going in that direction. We're going to start from the top and work our way down because we have our darker colors down here and I kind of want to keep them down there. So we're just going to go ahead and start to blend it downwards. And it's okay that it's a little bit lighter than his stomach because we want it to be different. And again, we're going to go ahead and go over this with some of the crayons here once that layer has dried. And they even have like some of that white highlight right there in the corner. Embrace that because it's working as a natural highlight right there. And just mixing. Oh, I love how much these products mix well together. They blend so nice. You can get all the range of values you need and their colors are so bright i feel like i've i've mentioned this to a couple people off offline is that the marabou colors are so bright and normally bright colors being the the main choice is always super intimidating for me but i feel like i've been learning a lot with by using marabou products i've been learning how to blend the colors to get a better result and it's really been helping my brain kind of process the color wheel a lot more and it's all because Marabou's line is so bright and they all complement each other across all their products. All right, so we're doing good. We're doing good. Oh, it's starting to come out a little bit. Okay. All right, and just a little bit here on his other paw, kind of hidden. We still have that branch there. Sometimes if you're, if you're in the process of doing something like this, go ahead and take a picture with your phone before laying down your color because that will really help as far as like remembering where your lines are and whatnot. Now we're going to go ahead and apply those same colors over here just to his tail. Cause he's got that, he's got that same coloring on the rings of his tail pattern. And we're just going to go ahead and bring that in. I really do like the fact that these won't dry until after 24 hours. You know, unlike like acrylic paint, it dries so fast. We need a little bit more purple spread there. So just kind of pull it in. We're just gonna overlap that, kind of spread it around like so. There we go. Creating some nice texture going on. Okay, starting from the outer rim, working our way in. Probably should have done that with the top one, but that's okay. It's creating different variations. So we're gonna go ahead and branch that back out again. It always makes me think of acrylic paint. Okay. All right, so now we've got that. We're gonna go ahead and let that sit and dry. So we're gonna move over to some leaves now. And I think what I'm gonna do I actually think I'm going to combine these two because I really like the way these look together. So we're going to start lighter. And we might even bring in like a third color. Actually, it's the pomegranate color that I want. That's okay. We're going to still use this one too. There we go. That's the color I'm wanting. My favorite art crayon. That raspberry color, aka pomegranate. just add some just a little bit because remember it's going to blend and remember I'm still just laying down my base coat of everything so we're going to be applying some more of this just straight on now I love the the aqua color with these pinkish colors with the marabou specifically because they end up 
turning into like this beautiful purpley, burgundy purpley color. And just creates a beautiful, beautiful contrast. Like look at that blend. I wouldn't be able to get that same kind of result with a green. And if you have extra on your brush, go ahead and use that to your advantage and kind of carry it over to another area of your piece. And just kind of let the brush strokes kind of dictate how your leaves turn out, how your foliage comes out. It's coming along nicely. Like that light pink as it's getting lighter the further I work up on the plant. There we go. And then again, just carry some of that down. Nothing goes to waste in mixed media. Nothing goes to waste. Okay, same application, kind of echoing, echoing those colors there. And we have a little bit of leaves going right there. And remember that we, he's got that branch. So we want to kind of bring that out. We can use, we can bring it out with the gesso on top. Okay. These are also just really nice to hold in your hands and I love it. You can seriously create an entire piece just with these. I've seen some amazing posts from Marabou as they've reposted artwork and I've seen some people make amazing things with these crayons. I think someone recently in the Art Snacks community did a portrait a few weeks ago. I was astounded that they did it with these marabou crayons like it the detail of that portrait was gorgeous so like the range that you can capture with these crayons is amazing like i use it very abstract ish and stuff like that i kind of control it with water but just applying them directly has been amazing all right so now we've got that we're gonna let that sit and dry we're gonna come back to our orange part of our little guy here and I think what we're going to do, we're just going to take that same terracotta color, which I love terracotta, and we're just going to apply it like so and start to create some shadows here. Now, remember, like the, the around the eyes is always a really a much darker area in the red panda face patterns. I'm just going to kind of apply it here, maybe at the corners of the ears, maybe like at the base of the neck right there, kind of like a little bit and his tummy, and kind of underside of his tail. Maybe a little bit right there, a little bit at the top of the fur right there. And now what we're gonna do here is I'm actually going to soften it by just applying straight water. And just moving it around. Now, while it does activate like a watercolor, it doesn't react like, a, like an actual watercolor it can give a watercolor effect. So don't expect it to react like a normal watercolor would. Remember, we're still gonna fill in his eyes, um, but it's nice because you get that watercolor effect. And we can always just push it down. There we go. And kind of like branching it out, just kind of like smudging it as you go, just right in the corners and whatnot. of going around just kind of like creating a little bit more depth to his face and now this can take a little like sometimes you might have to work with it a little bit more sometimes you might have to like make it a little more I think we might even go over with another color just to kind of push the layers a little bit push the values there we go Okay. 
and it just takes a little bit. Honestly, I find that working with a damp brush with these watercolor crayons is the best when I want to keep as much saturation as possible. All right. So now we've got that in. Let's go back to this aqua. Let's bring some aqua into the shading area. Let's kind of just bring a little bit of shadow just here and there. Not a lot, just a little. Just a little bit of shadow. And it's kind of like a color blocking effect here. And we're just gonna add a little bit. And by, by switching up your colors can really help push your values, even if you're not wanting to like go super dark. Sometimes just changing your colors. So instead of going to a scent to a blue, this, this uh, aqua color really stands out against this purple and whatnot and kind of starts to create a little bit more of a shadow effect. Kind of going around this pause right there. And there we go. Kind of taking that same damp brush over here and just kind of spreading it around. We just, a little goes a really long way. Be very, very surprised, but a little goes a really long way. All right. Now, for this next part, I'm actually going to start to create, to create some shadow with these white areas, but I don't want to apply straight from the crayon. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a damp brush and I'm literally going to just apply some water straight to the tip of my crayon and I'm going to carry it over like a watercolor. And we're just going to start to create some shadows here. Purple being that universal shadow color. I'm going for a lavender, especially because white is it can be really tricky when you're trying to keep something area white you know you it's really hard to think what can i add to it i find soft light lavenders or light blues or even like a Payne's gray give a perfect shadow effect while still being able to make your piece or your area look white i'm kind of going and applying it to the underside of his cheek right there kind of carrying it. Same with this little snout, little muzzle. And it's already starting to create a value that we didn't quite know we were needing. I can't wait to add line work to this. I think the line work is gonna be a lot of fun. And I may even go in with a little very light blue like I was just talking about and kind of fill in just a little bit more. It's all about layers. And you want to keep it going in layers. We're going to go ahead and apply some of this because I like to echo colors in other areas of the piece. So we're going to go ahead and echo this purple color right in our little, I think these are peonies. And we're just going to kind of apply that right into the white parts of that. Kind of create, make it look a little bit more lifelike. And if it's still not dark enough, then you can just take your crayon, even while it's got water on it, you could seriously just take your crayon, dip it in some water, got a little bit of water on there. It's hard to tell on camera, but, and you can just apply it like so. Like there's the possibilities with these crayons is endless. And we're just taking a little bit there and we're gonna, with our damp brush, we're gonna spread it around and it also creates a nice texture effect on there. Kind of dig it around. I wonder. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. There is also a white crayon as well. Just had it. Where did I move it to? I moved it somewhere. We had a, oh, there it is. My desk is running out of space. Now there is a white crayon. Don't underestimate the value of a white crayon. We're gonna try this and see, ah, creates a nice kind of, I like that, I like that a lot. We're just gonna kind of create a faux highlight almost. Faux highlight, is that a thing? I don't know, it is now. And we're gonna go ahead and just kind of blend that lavender a little bit with that white. Create a little bit more value onto those leaves. Kind of give them a waxier look to them. A little bit of a shine. 
Okay. And now this texture here is not always a bad thing. Sometimes it's good just to keep the natural crayon texture. It creates an, a dynamic that's like really hard to capture organically. Uh, sorry, unorganically. It's, it creates an organic te texture that's really hard to recreate. There we go. I can describe. <laughs> Now, what I'm noticing is there's a lot of blue in the center, but there's not a whole lot of blue around the outside. So we're gonna come back to that in a minute. But I wanna go ahead, I wanna finish up the last areas of this little guy, at least his areas right there. I think we're gonna create his little paws. His little, I think I'm gonna grab a cherry red. And we're just gonna apply it straight, kind of bring out those, I don't know if they have toe beans exactly like cats do, but you know what? He's our little guy, he's our little creation. By adding red and white, what do you get? You get pink. So it's gonna go in real nice with the rest of our piece here. Okay. Sometimes you gotta re-add, restock on your gesso, but that's okay. We're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna add more. More of our gesso there. Kind of creates a bit more of a rosier kind of complexion there, but that's okay. Perfectly okay. You just need a little smudge. Sometimes if you have too much, go ahead and carry it over to another area where it needs gesso and just kind of apply it. And if you still have leftovers on your brush, then just take it and apply it somewhere else on the piece. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. There we go. You know, I mentioned it earlier, but if you guys are not following Marabou, you want to be. You can find them at Marabou Creative USA. And they post amazing work. Like, they share so much amazing work from artists in the community. It's amazing. Um, you know what? We're going to go ahead. We're just going to apply this very lightly. It's the same blue we were using here. Um, yep. And we're just going to apply it into the little corners, the darkest parts of our shadow area, kind of complementing and bringing all those colors kind of together. There we go. Doing good. Now his feet right there is a little bit rosy for me. So I'm looking forward to adding a little bit more pink to it. I think we're going to add straight up rosy pink and we're just going to kind of blend it in while it's still wet, because you can do that with these crayons. That's why I love mixed media, you guys. There's like no rules, no rules. And then applying some more of that gesso, just layer, and that's the thing, if you don't like something, you can just layer over it, kind of like acrylic painting. All right, now that that then we got a couple areas we got to block in with color and then we're going to work towards the line work. Actually, I think I want to go ahead and work on the line work right now and fill in these outer rims after. So we're going to take this purple here. It's a violet, a dark violet. This is going to be our outlining color. Woohoo. Love it. And oftentimes you can get quite a bit of what you need just in the cap right here. So I'm going to reach for a very tiny thin, thin brush. And we're just going to work right out of this cap right here. So once you shake it, it tends to be perfect. Now I'm testing it out. Always have a little test swatch available. Oh yeah. Cause I don't want to outline the entire thing in a full headlong outline. I just want to kind of add a little bit of definition using this watercolor ink. And we're just going to kind of brush stroke it down. I'm not going to go over the entire thing again, just trying to kind of create some value there. And I don't know if this guy is going to last me very long. I might have to switch to a bigger brush, but you know, for these little tiny corners and stuff, it might work great. All right. Kind of still applying with that. What's whatever's in our cap right there. Trying to be soft about it. It doesn't always work that way, but that's okay. That's why you can spread it out. And the thing I love about watercolor inks is that they give you that forgiveness. <laughs> All right, now for these, this area here, I think it's this area that I'm really wanting to like define. So let's go ahead and just kind of 
darken it out. Now I'm, I'm outlining with a purple on purpose because we kind of got so much purple going on already. I want to keep it going. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of create a nice dark outline here. Just kind of one big swoop. But to soften it out, what we're going to do, we're going to take a slightly larger brush. Still a fine, finer brush here. And we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to, with a damp brush, take the ink from that line and we're just going to go ahead and fan it upwards into the other dark shadow of our area. So we have a nice crisp line to indicate where our shadow is, but then we have our highlight right next to it. And that is, I don't know what it's called, but there is a name for that kind of technique in painting. Here we go. So it's kind of blending in nice and we're creating shadow. We're not focusing solely on line work. We're giving, we're still defining our areas. And this is why having some of those inks around is really helpful. So we're gonna kind of, I'm going based off of memory here, so forgive me. And I kind of like the very loose or very light line work of that those little paw. They have little claws, but I, didn't, I forgot to add the claws, so. It's okay, he's a harmless, he's a harmless little panda. All right. Go ahead and then keep, keep pushing your values. Make your darks darker and your lights lighter. Don't be afraid to push your values. And I've really been noticing that since working with the Marabou products more. It's been wonderful. I don't think I realized how muted my stuff was. <laughs> All right. And kind of same thing that we did over there. We're going to apply a thicker layer or a darker layer just in the corner, just right in the corners. It's really where the, in the corners where you want to focus on the most. And we're just going to kind of spread it out. Don't let it be a, a, like a pure harsh line. Just kind of spread it out and keep it going. If you need to switch to a larger brush, by all means, do so. You could even do this with your blue or your, your teal color. Doesn't have to be just the purple. Now we've got our paw right there, but it kind of looks a little wonky. So let's go ahead and bring some life to that one. We're just gonna kind of go ahead and we're gonna recreate his little, his little paws. Little chubby paws right there. Love it. Same thing, fanning it out. I don't want too many harsh lines. I wanna create a value. So I don't want too many harsh lines there. There we go. Okay. Now for this one, for this area, we are going to go ahead and go a little bit bigger paintbrush here. Kind of still kind of emphasizing that. And then fanning it out, you can start to see it developing. You start to see our, our definition showing through. Okay, and kind of fanning that out there as well. Sometimes you might lose your, your lines and that's okay, just add more. You can always go back. All right, let's see here. I'm just kind of deepening that out. I think my favorite part, again, about these marabou items is they all complement each other so well. I'm kind of like bringing that up. Don't be afraid to spread out that shadow a little bit more. Love it. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take that same purple. We're just going to use this as our nose color. If we need to deepen it out more, we can. But always start lighter and work darker because you can always darken it. You cannot always lighten it. I think we're going to go ahead and add his eyes now because I think he's gone without eyes for long enough. And 
means a happy little red panda. Got a little bamboo branch. And same thing, we need a little bit more definition under the chin right there. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of plop that right there. I'm being a little bit more generous this time because we're covering a larger area and just kind of fan it out as you go. There we go. Don't be afraid for your, of the dark values there. All right, and then same thing, we're gonna kind of make it a little bit more of a diluted color with that ink and we're just gonna, like more diluted, we're gonna go ahead and outline what I'm discovering because I've been really enjoying outlining in different colors than just black ink. Um, I've been learning that you don't have to add line art to every little area or it doesn't have to all be the same. It can be valued line art. It came out a little bit harsh there, but I actually kind of like it because it's still really soft. As long as the line art is soft in the white areas, that's what I think I want the most. And just kind of take that, fan it out, let it be part of your shadow, let it be part of your color. Kind of go ahead, bring that down. He's looking good, he's coming along. We're gonna go ahead and add a little bit more because we didn't really get to add shadow uh, to a little eyebrow patches. So we're gonna just add some of that there right now. Ooh, that came out really dark. That's okay, it's a watercolor. So just remember, treat it like a watercolor. Okay, now I think I want this to be a little bit more smooth. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and take my white crayon here and just apply it right on. Maybe a little bit right there too. Kind of create some of that highlight and then fan it out with a damp brush. You can also smudge these crayons with your fingers, by the way. You don't always have to add water or gesso. You can literally just kind of take your finger and that can create a whole other effect. In fact, I might add a little bit to his belly bump right there. Just kind of, oh, look at that. That was perfect. Perfect, okay. Adding a little bit more to the nose as you start to go around, Circul circulating through your piece always is helpful because whenever you come back to a certain area, you get you almost have fresh eyes. You almost have fresh eyes whenever you're working on it. And then you come back and you see, oh, this is what I need to add. This is what's missing. All right, now I wanna add a little bit of that purple. So I'm gonna take a very diluted uh, uh, bit of that ink. We're just gonna add it in as part of our shadow for the orange. I used a green or an aqua color as a shadow for the underbelly part, but I don't really want something that contrasting. So we're just gonna add a little bit of the purple, kind of working it as a universal shadow color and kind of just kind of bring it in to our tail here. It doesn't need a whole lot, just a little bit as you go. And then same thing, kind of bringing some of that line art to the tail, to the rest of the body. And I'm just, I'm just taking some ink and I'm just kind of putting it onto a piece of wax paper here. Now, there's also an extra added effect that we can do that I'm gonna show you guys in a minute. I love the effect of kind of solid white areas left around colored areas in an illustration. I feel, I don't know what the name of that is, but I feel like it's beautiful in application. So I'm thinking about doing that with the rest of our foliage that we haven't quite finished. So by taking this, this is all outlined in purple, you guys. This is just outlined in purple. And then remembering where your darkest parts are, remembering where the darkest areas are. Don't be afraid to go deep with the color application there. So like right where his belly, his belly bump is, go ahead and make that liner a little bit more full and just kind of like blend it in right all the way up to that foot because we didn't really emphasize the bottom of that foot a whole lot. So just kind of blend it out, blend it out, 
Let your blends also help with your line work. Let's just kind of apply some of that over here. I'm a little bit darker. Yes, valued line art. It's literally never even thought about the name until just now. Uh, but it's been something I've been in love with. And it's really been changing my art perspective. Focusing on it where it needs it the most. All right, so now we've got most of our little panda guy. I think we're just gonna go ahead and do like a little shading complement right there with some of this purple. Just kind of go ahead, yeah. Darken it out right there. Cool, I love that. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and do a little brief. You know, I think we're gonna switch colors. I think we're gonna switch colors. We're gonna go ahead and pull this uh, petrol color, which is kind of that aqua color that we were using earlier with the crayon. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do that for the foliage line work. Now, if that's another thing that you can do is you can add different colored line work for different areas. So like purple was our main focus for this guy. So let's go ahead and work on some foliage line art and just let it be teal and kind of work that to our advantage. And I'm just doing very light, very loose, I should say loose line work here and don't like also like use it to your advantage add it add some shadow add some shadow in that we didn't really add a whole lot of shadow to these flowers so just kind of use that and kind of spread it around what you're creating right there is you're creating a beautiful soft line work these inks are also really great for creating that valued line work Kind of going in right there. It's looking good. I'm liking this. Okay, and then moving on to the next little area right here kind of bring out this leaf area that we didn't really touch earlier and we're just going to kind of add some valued line work with it all right and it almost creates a little bit of a dimension to your piece by doing it like this okay let's see remembering where the darkest parts are of our little foliage plant. You don't have to outline every area, but some would be nice. Ooh, I like that. I like that. And you can just branch your line art and fade some of it out. Like literally just fade it out till there's no more line left. Men, remember, start lighter, work darker you can always add more later on. You cannot always take away. And then any residue, you can just kind of bleed out more. So kind of going back over here, recreating that same flower effect that we did in the corner. Create some of that line work up here. Kind of more of that shadows. Kind of 
some of that dry brush some of the rest of it around your piece don't be afraid don't be afraid of the dry brush and you know what i think we've got time for not one more one more effect Okay, you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's create a little bit of a, what color do we need? What color do we need? We need like a light blue, I think. So we're gonna take the cyan color. Actually, where am I getting? We're gonna take a lavender color. And we're just gonna apply it like so. Use some of that texture to your advantage because we have a lot of these little white areas here. So let's just draw in some, even like some random circly textures and kind of fanning it out. Just a little bit here and there, not a whole lot. What we're wanting to do is we want to fill the page. Okay, and then add a few little dots here and there. And I think we're actually gonna take that, that same teal color that we were working with. We're gonna take a larger brush though, because we wanna cover some areas. And we want a bit of a watercolor technique. So by taking some more of that, whatever's in our cap here, diluting it down, we don't want it too powerful. Yeah, and we're just gonna very, lightly add some water <laughs> you can even like have it accent the areas that you've already kind of laid out and we're just we're just adding some fullness you don't have to fill everything but at least enough to make it to make it so that when you look at it you're like okay the page is full and you can even just like Fan it out all over your piece. I love the dry wash effect so much. Just kind of like accent some of those leaf textures and just kind of like let it let it accent itself here and then even get a little bit more faint colors and just kind of like color splotch it over there all right i think i think we might have reached completion you guys so always remember to sign your work i'm going to go ahead and grab a pen here. I'm just going to grab, grab a pen. Make sure to always sign your work. We're going to sign it in this little area right here. There we go. And now we get to actually take off the washi tape. Waha. I know you guys love that part. Now this is apparently lifting up some of my paper, but that's okay. It's not lifting up any of my piece, so I'm okay. Creating that marabou mood, that mara mood, amen to that. All right, and there we have it, you guys, our little red panda friend. I love this, I love these crayons, I love what they do, especially with these inks. They're so fun. Remember that you can shop everything from this stream down in uh, in this stream, actually. You can shop every, all the supplies from this stream down in the Art Snack Shop, and you can get a direct link straight from this stream, whether you're catching it live or watching the replay. And have some fun, you guys. Have some fun and make your own Maramood piece. Be sure and give Marabou a follow at Marabou Creative USA. They are the makers of all these beautiful products, and they post amazing work. I kid you not, I think they're laced with magic. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for joining me, and thank you for appreciating this piece. This was so much fun to make. Uh, I will see you guys next Monday. 
And again, everything in this stream is available in the Art Snack Shop. Have a lovely night, you guys. Stay safe. Bye now.